guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we will take a look at some new p o r r y v e n g e content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled, "Let Your Dog Poop in Our Driveway." Well, let me get our horse. I grew up in the countryside. My parents weren't farmers, but we had a barn and a little stable. So we had two horses, which were the love of my mother and sister. My parents rented a pasture every summer, so our horses could walk free instead of being crammed in the stable and the little outlet we had for them. So during summer, either my mom, my sister, my brother, or me had to bring the horses on the pasture and get them back in the evening. Our neighbor had a dog. I hated this thing. It was untrained, would bark the whole night, and well, took shits in our driveway. The lady who owned it took walks several times a day and let her dog shit in our driveway on our lawn. One time, I saw her and called her out. She was sorry and told me it wouldn't happen again. But the next day, they were again dog crap in our driveway. The next time I saw her during it, I reminded her that dog poop must be picked up and leaving it is illegal. You can get fined well above 100 euros for dog crap here. Depends on the region you in. She smugly replies, "Well, maybe in the city, but here in the country it isn't. Yes, if your dog poops in the woods, it's maybe okay, but not in the ducking village." One summer day, I went out barefoot to get the mail and stepped into a dog poo. Barefoot. I spent some minutes on our front porch washing my foot with our front hose. The same evening, it was my turn to return our horses back from the pasture together with my younger sister. She was leading our mare, Brownie. Yes, she's a brown horse. My sister was five when she named her. So what? And I lead our stallion, Zeus, back home. Zeus was a pretty big workhorse we got from an older gentleman who couldn't take care of him anymore. He looks mean, but he was a very gentle horse. But he was like one metric ton of horse. He was a shyer horse. So my sister was in front of me because Brownie was eager to get home, while Zeus liked to stop to eat some grass on the way home. When we were passing my neighbor's driveway, and I noticed Zeus had to drop some well apples. Normally he would shit and walk at the same time, but I made him stop, and because of karma, Zeus took one of his huger dumps right in front of my neighbor's driveway. Normally, if one of our horses would shit during our route in the village, our mom would have us to clean it up. But I hide the fact that Zeus pooped in front of her house. My mom would surely make an exception in this case. The next day, I was up early, taking our well-behaved dog for a walk while carrying bags for his poop, like normal people. And then I saw the outcome. My neighbor backed out of her driveway in her very low-riding white convertible car and had driven through Zeus' glorious pile of apples. When she saw me and my really big grin, she yelled at me to clean it up because it was my horse. I told her, "Maybe in the city it's the rule to pick up your horse's droppings, but here in the country it isn't." I left her dumbfound and went inside. From then on, she never let her dog crap in our driveway again. It kinda bite me back though. She told my mother, who told me to scrap the rest of Zeus' droppings from her driveway, but she refused to let me wash her car because she was stupid enough to back out of her driveway without a proper look. Next one is titled, "Karen wants her special windows, but she doesn't get them." I used to live in an awful place: high crime, drug dealing, drug taking, and alcoholics. There were regular fights, robberies, and it was a really rough, notorious street and quite unsafe. But if you went out of the street and turned either left or right, it was completely normal—just families living their lives. It existed in a bubble of its own in an otherwise nice area. I found myself in a spot of bother a number of years ago, abusive situation, and was fortunate enough that I was given a flat by the local authority landlord, who owned 99% of the property there, so I would not be homeless. It was there. I kept to myself and didn't get involved. The flat above me was privately owned, rather than being owned by the local authority landlord, my landlord, and was up for sale. In comes an older Karen, 
She knocked on my front door and announced I had to give her permission to use my back garden for her and her visiting family because the estate agents told her my garden was hers as well. I informed her this was not true as I was a local authority landlord tenant, and it was a garden for my own sole use. I urged her to check with my landlord and address it with the estate agent. She argued for a bit then stomped off in a huff, and this unfortunately set a precedent. After this, Karen went out of her way to cause problems. She would stomp across the floor at all hours, jump up and down, bang, slam doors, and play music. She bought a motorized running machine and would run on it at 6 in the morning for half an hour. She'd throw things out of the windows overlooking my back garden, like food, rubbish, anything she fancied. She squirted PVA glue out the window at my dog, she missed, and it hit my window, tipped bleach out the window at the dog, missed again, threw medication out the window. I found little tablets all over the garden, bread stained a dark blue with a chemical of some kind. She even encouraged the visiting children to spit out the back window at us and kick my front door. I actually stood and watched a child kicking my front door, and, Karen, was standing there laughing. Another time the same child threw Pepsi all over my windows, and, Karen, was laughing. She would generally spread lies about me to the neighbors, and she knew how to turn on the tears to get people to believe her. I just ignored them all and kept to myself. I reported her to my landlord, but this just made things worse. She would then go to all the neighbors and tell them what I'd done to her and how she was a victim of me. After several years of this behavior, it had gotten to the point where I was no longer able to go out of my front door because of her and her friend neighbors, she'd give money and food to, congregating there and being threatening towards me and so I was using my back gate to come and go. I wore a camera discreetly for my own safety. I had security cameras up in my flat, and all instances of abuse and harassment and things being thrown out the windows and were caught on camera were sent to the police and my landlord which they noted and did not action at my request. Unfortunately, it was now at the point where speaking to her did nothing, and I was in this awful position. In the beginning, I had tried to speak to, Karen, about things and she'd said that she could do whatever she liked in her own home, and then it would escalate, and the other neighbors who were her friends would join in. Then one day, I had a note pushed through my door from, Karen. She wants to get her windows replaced. There's nothing wrong with them, she just wants special windows that open wider and reverse, so she can clean them because they overlook my back garden, and she has no access. The thing is that even though she had bought her flat, the outside of the building belonged to the local authority landlord which she, leased, from them, so she needed their permission to make changes, and they were a holes about permissions, like literally every I dotted and T crossed. The note stated that Karen had their written permission to replace the windows but needed access via my back garden to erect scaffolding to replace them. I thought this didn't sound right as this was the first I'd heard about it, and I was sure my landlord would have spoken to me before giving Karen permission. So I rang my landlord. Karen did not have permission. Hadn't even applied for permission but had gone ahead and paid money and had these new windows measured. She was asking for access to my garden for three days. She wanted my gate unlocked and open for all these people to come into my garden as they pleased to replace her windows. After my landlord ringing her to say she'd been found out, Karen ended up having to fill in all the paperwork for my landlord. Karen actually thought she was going to go ahead without having to get permission and I'd let her do it without checking, which I could have done. I hate bureaucracy at the best of times and know from experience at how anally retentive my landlord is, and had she been a nicer person, I would have just agreed to it on the quiet, and then if it ever came up with my landlord, I would have said, Karen told me she had permission, and she can take the consequences of it. However, I'd spent years living like a prisoner, living with all this stress. Upset and anxiety had really taken a toll on me, and now, Karen, wanted something from me. Absolutely not. As I now used my back door and back gate as my primary entrance, and I had been subjected to years of abuse from this woman and her friends, with a good paper and video trail, I did the proper thing and voiced my concerns to my landlord and asked my landlord to do a risk assessment. It was determined that because I needed unrestricted access to the primary entrance myself at all times, 
that any scaffolding could be a hazard to myself, and anyone coming onto my property. I had recently paid for patio gravel and grass and had the garden landscaped, so any scaffolding and resulting trades people could cause damage to my property. And given the fact that, Karen, had previously broken something of mine outside that she laughed in my face when she was asked to replace it, we knew that it would be unlikely anything broken would get replaced by her. Because I had all this evidence of, Karen's, behavior, I was able to state that my having the gate unlocked would be detrimental to my welfare, that it would encourage antisocial behavior from her and the neighbors who were her friends, who would just have to come into my garden to look at the windows. And that having my gate unlocked could potentially mean that the security of my property would be compromised. I had a seven foot high fence all around my garden, so someone could be there for as long as they needed undisturbed to gain entry to my flat. We also decided that, Karen, having windows that open wider would exacerbate the antisocial behavior I was already subjected to as who knows what she would throw out next if she had a bigger gap to do so. The list literally went on and was more than enough to nail the coffin shut and have some extra nails. So Karen didn't get her windows replaced and lost a few thousand dollars in the process, and it was my entire fault. Yep, it was petty. Cue more abuse from Karen and her friends. Then my landlord moved me to another one of their properties in the countryside which is much nicer, and my neighbors are amazing. Next one is titled, Stealing from Locker, Enjoy Your Trophy. One of recent posts here reminded of story from my father. He worked in a factory in Eastern Europe An event occurred somewhere in 1980s. I know how weird it looks now in 2020s, but at the time it was pretty common that workers in factory would come to work drunk or they would drink alcohol at work. My father was not much different and he would occasionally bring a bottle of brandy and keep it in his locker. These lockers were pretty easy to access without a key, you would need just a screwdriver or some piece of metal and door would be easily bent and returned to original afterwards. The factory was working in shifts and when you come next day, you would just notice that someone opened your locker and something is missing that you left inside a day earlier. As my father was bringing quite good booze it would be missing next day. After who knows how many times his booze was stolen, he had enough of it and he decided to set a trap for thief. The brandy he usually brought was color similar to whiskey, due to being matured in oak casks, and he took an empty bottle to the toilet and fill it with his urine and locked it back to his locker and went home after his shift was over. As shifts were slightly overlap, there was no break in factory process. Next day when he would come to work, people from previous shift were still there. He came to his locker and noticed that bottle was completely missing. He came to the workspace and loudly asked if anyone knows what has happened to the bottle with urine from his locker. He said that he had to go to medical check as he might have some urinary infection and he had to bring morning urine, but he have forgotten it in his locker day earlier. One of guys turned red and started yelling at my father how he dared to leave urine in bottle labeled as brandy, that someone could have mistakenly drink it and get seriously sick. After that his locker was not robbed ever and that guy have gotten new nickname, a piss drinker. Last one is titled, feel entitled towards my data? You won't get the data of the next customers. I went to the checkout after grocery shopping. The cashier was pretty huffy to the customer in front of me already, and asked for their zip code at the end of the transaction. Apparently I committed a mortal sin by not using a divider between my pile of groceries and the next customer's stuff. I left plenty of room to the next customer, though, so it was evident where my pile ended, because she bitched at me. Where's the divider? No hello, nothing. She rang up my groceries without a word, then told me how much I owe, and while I was pulling out my money, it ensued. Her. Zip code? Me. Sorry? Her. What's your zip code? Me. I don't see why I should give it to you. Her visibly rolls her eyes i need to type it in here me if you want my data or anything else i'm not obligated to give then ask for it in a friendly way i definitely won't give it to you now she mumbled something about people being paranoid and that she will just type the main city zip code in i am packing my groceries while she is ringing up the next customer asks zip code 
and he says, I think I won't give it either. The customer that came after him was already chuckling, so I guess he also denied it, but I didn't see that as I was already on my merry way. Thanks for listening.